Well, Bitcoin is really the only thing that matters. Bitcoin will always only be the only thing that, that matters. Everything else is kind of nonsense. When a company comes in uh, as a pitch, so how do you evaluate if you want to invest or not? Well, you close your eyes, you hold your nose and pray. I ask my cat, Cannoli, and he gives me uh, a meow or no meow. Hey everyone, this is Prashant and I'll be your host of the VC 10X podcast and today we have Mike Jarmos with us. Mike is a general partner at Lightning Ventures where he's focused on investing in Bitcoin related companies. This is undoubtedly one of the most fun episodes I've recorded. In this episode, we talk about investing in Bitcoin startups, commonalities between music industry and venture capital, benefits of the angel syndicate model, why Bitcoin is probably the only thing that matters, exciting portfolio companies, and a lot more. So without wasting any time, let's dive straight in. Hey, Mike. So good to have you on the VC10X podcast. How are you doing? I'm better than excellent, and it's great to be here. Uh, thank you for uh, taking some time to sit down and chat. Awesome. I've been, I've been loving your vibe ever since you've got on this call. So let's straight away hit it off. So what's your story been like and how you started Lightning Ventures? Okay. So uh, the short version is um, I was in the music business for most of my life and uh, moved to New York. And um, in 2015, I wanted to start investing in private companies. So I focused mainly on late stage uh, secondaries. My first investment was in Lyft and uh, started with a lot of those later stage IPO, uh, pre-IPO companies, uh, and uh, got really familiar with that. I didn't want to invest in early stage companies because I didn't want to lose all my money. Uh, so, you know, the DraftKings, Spotify, Poshmark, Uber, Airbnb, Robinhood, those type of names, uh, I pretty much just focused on that. And uh, I'm a late 2012 Bitcoiner, that 2013, uh, Mount Gox, uh, you know, the Silk Road, all that period. Um, you know, I was from that that era as a Bitcoiner. And uh, I had a bar in New York City. We had the second Bitcoin ATM uh, in New York at the time. So um, after I started investing in later stage private companies and getting my own education down, I mean, really just being obsessed with learning as much as you can. And this whole thing, it takes a... a, a uh, many years to, to learn and probably a lifetime or more to master. Uh, I met this guy who I was showing him what I was doing. And uh, he said, Look, that's great and all. But um, if you really want to do this, you, you know, you got to you got to get going with the early stage stuff. So kind of dialed up my deal flow, got my own comfort, uh, a little bit more comfortable with it. And then I somehow found myself investing in over 2000 uh, deals. So that's uh, including the follow-ons uh, from companies, but maybe about 1,500 unique companies, right? And that's everything from, uh, from flying cars to, you know, to the drugs that make your dog live longer and, and all those kind of things. Uh, so just learning as much as you can because you learn from each deal, right? So a lot of small checks, you can <laughs> absorb so much from just reading founder updates, uh, following the company, trying to help when you can. And, um, and you become this kind of uh, living, breathing API for really cool stuff that's like happening in the world. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much uh, what I did to get comfortable. And, when I, and I never went back to the late stage after that. So was thinking with some friends, um, it was really their idea. Uh, and they kind of encouraged me that, you know, hey, you know, you've been in many deals and Bitcoin's kind of the one area where we can help out. So why not start um, a boutique venture uh, fund uh, and a syndicate that will just focus on Bitcoin and Bitcoin only companies? And I'm really thankful that they suggested that. So we uh, started, we raised a very small friends and family fund uh, that's with no fees, you know, essentially doing it for free and need it to do very well uh, and started deploying that and started building out the syndicate. Um, and since then, we've invested in probably uh, maybe 28 or so deals uh, combined through the, through both. Sometimes uh, there's opportunities that we can't offer in the syndicate that we can just invest in through the fund. 
uh, sometimes vice versa. Maybe you're in between capital calls or you're not able to invest through the fund and you just are able to offer it through the syndicate, sometimes both. Um, but so far, it's been a lot of fun and uh, we're very active. We have a lot of a lot of deal flow uh, for everyone in our group. And it's great for networking. It's great for finding work. It's great for a lot of different things. So um, I hope everyone's enjoying it. I mean, I'm enjoying it. And uh, we're working really hard to uh, to try and uh, invest in uh, Bitcoin only companies and then support them moving forward. And that's that's what we're doing. Yeah, you're certainly enjoying it. And I have quite a few follow up questions on that. So the first one goes, how many Bitcoins do you really have? <laughs> well, you know, like uh, like they say with Fight Club, right? The first rule of Bitcoin is you never discuss how many Bitcoins. So uh, I think my, and to answer your question, I think zero. I've never had any Bitcoin. I don't even know anything about it. <laughs> got it. Got it. So you, you've invested in uh, before that. Let me ask you this. So I've previously interviewed one more VC who has who was once into music and then tra transitioned into VC. So is, is there a music to VC pipeline? Well, it's kind of interesting. And uh, I've wanted to do a, like a, a little article or something about this for a while, but there's a lot of similarities between the music business and venture capital. At least I draw a lot of similarities. So, uh, you know, pre, pre the internet of what it is today and pre streaming and pre MP3s and all of that stuff, you know, uh, you, you had you had mainly CDs and, and albums and uh, and how you found out about uh, new music was your favorite record label. OK, so if you really loved Epitaph Records and the other bands that were on Epitaph Records and their type of punk rock, uh, their style, their their brand, usually what they do, then you really kept an eye on Epitaph Records. And when they signed a new band, um, that was how you kind of discovered uh, new music. So if you draw that similarity to venture capital, um, you know, the VCs are kind of like labels, right? There's, there's indie labels. There's the smaller people like us, right? Which, I, which in the music, we, we always thought were the cool kids, right? The indie labels is where everything started. And then eventually they end up graduating or getting uplifted and pulled to a major label, right? So that's kind of where we focus, right? We're in the, the independent label kind of smaller, earlier stage companies. And then there's a lot of the major labels, you know, the Sequoias, the Union Square Ventures, Foundry Groups, all of those types uh, that are much later stage. So I think that there's some comparisons in that, uh, in that way. And, you know, I was also a concert promoter. Okay, so with a concert promoter, what you want to do is, is you want to book a, a, a band or an artist, uh, maybe they're doing 50 people. Uh, and then you maintain that relationship with them as far as you can. So you have this A&R sort of uh, development, right? They're doing 50 people and then they come back to your city and book another show. They're doing 300 and 500 and pretty soon maybe they do 5,000 people. That was the biggest concert we were ever able to promote was around 5,000. And then you lose them. Then they go to Live Nation and Clear Channel and there's just no way to be involved with the company as an independent promoter at that level, right? But that's the goal. The goal is to maintain that relationship, uh, to build them up as far as you can take them and maintain that relationship. And then it eventually goes. So that's kind of in line with venture as well, right? Because, you know, I mean, a lot of family offices, a lot of people, they just, they cut a check and they're not very active. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Everyone needs uh, trusted capital from, from good people. Uh, but, you know, we try to pride ourselves on taking more of a hands-on approach with being active, okay? And that's kind of the power of the syndicate and why I really like that model is because if you have people who are all accomplished in their own right, um, they're able to help with different things when the companies come back and actually need something, right? You might have an iOS wizard. You might have uh, a, a dozen attorneys who invested in that deal who can help out with something, right? So you try to leverage everyone and get them to participate and help. So, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, that the music business is a, is a good path to, to venture, and there's a lot of similarities there. I'm curious who that other VC was that you're... Uh, that you mentioned there. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure I remember his name right now. I need to check back and get back to you later on this. But I love this answer on how you compared the VC industry 
with the music industry and how they are so similar in so many different ways. And one more thing that you touched upon is uh, running a syndicate and a fund simultaneously. Is that correct? Uh, Lightning Ventures is both a fund and a syndicate, correct? Yes. Yeah, so the question I have there is, I, I believe the syndicate started first and then the fund came in, correct? No, uh, we started raising the fund okay, first. Okay. Um, but now that's a very small fund, okay? I mean, in comparison with, with, with everything else that's out there, I mean, it's barely, barely a fund. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, you, you kind of can use the syndicate as a way to supplement that. Right. Okay, so if, if we're investing in your company, uh, and we're able to close a, a small check from our fund and start a relationship with you, you might, uh, maybe you're raising a million dollars and maybe you have 200,000 raised, uh, you know, and there's some room in that, right? And I can tell you about the syndicate and maybe you're willing to give us an allocation of a, another 100,000 or so uh, that we can offer out to the group. So um, it's really, it really complements it. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I was just curious about how the combination of these two work when, uh, when I see someone operating the syndicate and the fund simultaneously, it's always interesting to find out how these two operate and what's the relationship between the two and what kind of deal flow goes in which direction, right? Uh, but it, it seems pretty sorted with you. Uh, besides, uh, one more thing, which uh, like the name of the venture is Lightning Ventures, and it's focused on uh, startups operating in the space of lightning network leveraging that so for our audience who's not familiar with this concept who's not that much into crypto uh, can you explain what this concept is lightning network and why it is venture backable well sure uh full disclosure uh lightning ventures uh was the best name uh when we were naming uh the outfit so um you know it's not lightning exclusive um, the focus is on lightning because that's that's where it's going, right? That is that is billions of people, all right? That's the scalability and that's everything else that's being built on top of lightning. And you're starting to see the peer-to-peer -peer messaging and peer-to-peer uh, -peer browsing and the micro streaming uh, and, and, and everything else, right? So it's all going to lightning. So that's definitely the focus. Uh, also, Bitcoiner Ventures was taken, uh, but really the focus is on Bitcoin. Right. So it's Bitcoin and it's Bitcoin only, um, you know, the, the, the emphasis is on lightning because that's the way that it's going. But really just Bitcoin companies uh, is pretty much the focus there. I understand. And oh, your question is why, why lightning yeah. or why, uh, why Bitcoin, uh, not uh, some NFT or something? Or... Exactly, exactly. Why that focus? Well, Bitcoin is really the only thing that matters. Uh, Bitcoin will always only be the only thing that, that matters. And when it isn't, uh, we'll know. Uh, uh, but as of right now, everything else is kind of nonsense. So you look at uh, El Salvador or some of these nation states that are adopting Bitcoin, uh, making it legal tender, creating very favorable environments. Uh, you know, in El Salvador's case, they lost their currency to a civil war. Uh, so they've been using the dollars and they basically wised up and said this, we have no control over this. And uh, they started uh, their road to Bitcoin, right? They're not adopting another coin. Uh, they're not adopting some useless altcoin or some other protocol or some other kind of like thing uh, there. And that's, I think that's what you'll see. Uh, I think that's what you've seen with, um, with uh, futures trading. Uh, I mean, that was the first asset that they added since gold in the 70s was Bitcoin uh, to CME. So, you know, Bitcoin is is it, right? That's all that's going to matter. And all the innovation uh, has come out of Bitcoin and, and will continue to come out of Bitcoin. And a lot of people don't realize it. You know, a lot of people don't realize that NFTs were invented on Bitcoin. Uh, it's just Bitcoin's too important uh, to pay a lot of attention to this sort of stuff, right? Uh, but the, um, the rare, uh, fake rares and the rare Pepe's and, and that sort of, uh, that was, that started on Bitcoin, right? So they even lead the innovation in stuff like that. Um, I mean, a lot of people are all about, you know, crypto and NFTs and, you know, your health, uh, your health records are going to be on a blockchain. 
the deed to your house is going to be on a blockchain. And I mean, semantics wise, I just don't consider that a blockchain. Uh, that's really not what a blockchain is. Okay. And, you know, uh, if I, if I lose the, uh, the password, uh, or lose access to my Bitcoin, uh, I've lost money. Okay. And that's my own personal responsibility as a sovereign individual and all the benefits that Bitcoin gives. Right. But I can't lose the deed to my condo. Okay. It's, it's not going to work that way. All right. So people want to talk about real estate on a blockchain. Um, that's not really a blockchain. Uh, if it was a blockchain, then you would be at a serious possibility that you may lose access to your health records permanently, okay? Because that's a blockchain, not a private database, all right, that somebody else has access to. That's, that's not what that is. And personally, I can't imagine um, a doctor trying to save someone's life and them not having access to their medical records on some sort of blockchain because they've lost a private key or whatever that situation is. Okay, I just don't think these things are reality. And I think people kind of have always since at least 2017 with IBM and a lot of these other culprits really just abused the, the blockchain, not Bitcoin sort of nonsense. You know, uh, that's not a blockchain in my opinion. So I don't really pay any attention to uh, metaverse uh, people, you know, adults. These are like real professionals that I meet in life uh, with a straight face telling me that I should be selling real estate uh, in a metaverse. Uh, I don't really take those people seriously. Um, I think they kind of like that's all kind of silly. Um, I think it's fun for kids. I mean, if I had a 14 or 15 year old kid and he was, you know, buying and selling property in the metaverse, I'd be real proud of him. Right. Uh, before we had all the conversation. So he knew that Bitcoin was really all that mattered. Um, but like as an adult, I mean, those sort of things don't interest me. And we get so many NFTs, so many fractionalized, a pair of Jordan tennis shoes, and then they trade on a secondary market or fractionalize a house, fractionalize the Mona Lisa uh, and all these sort of sort of things, right? Um, and maybe they all have some good use cases. I'm sorry for rambling here. You know, when I was a kid, I was in the Weezer fan club uh, and Weezer, the, the band at the time, they sent me an ID card in the mail and it had a, a picture on it and it was laminated and that was a lot of fun. Okay. And that was how you joined these sort of, uh, these sort of things, right? Um, maybe that's a cool NFT. Uh, maybe it's cool for an artist to have, you know, an exclusive fan club kind of thing uh, that they can give out to people. Uh, but that's not the deed to your, your house. OK, that's like a, a, a modern spin on an old idea of fan clubs or access or things like that. You know, limited edition collectibles, um, sports cards, you know, I mean, who didn't collect uh, baseball and basketball cards as a kid? Uh, I don't think it'll ever replace that physical uh, joy that you get by holding that card or trading it with your friends or putting it in the spikes of your bicycle, depending on how old you are. Uh, you can't do that with an NFT, um, but you can certainly have cool things, right? Certificates of authenticity. You know, maybe you get something signed and autographed and you have that piece of paper certificate. Maybe there's another backup of that, right? That could be verifiable through an NFT that trades with that physical object. Some of these use cases are like super valid and interesting. You know, it's just the inundation and the amount of like inbox inbound stuff that we get of like, oh, this is an NFT DAO, whatever, whatever. Uh, we just don't even look at it. I mean, the middle, the minute I see the word token uh, or, you know, NFT or metaverse or crypto or Web3, we just don't even look, right? Like we specialize in one thing and one thing only, and that's Bitcoin companies only. And a lot of these generalists that are out there with crypto, uh, I don't even know how they do it because there's so many darn things. Um, so we try to just stay in that lane and uh, we're pretty convinced uh, that Bitcoin is it. And, you know, everyone goes through that cycle, depending on where you're at in your, your Bitcoin life. Okay. Uh, first you discover Bitcoin, you say, I hate this. And then uh, some time goes by and you take another look at it and you go, oh, wow, this is actually really cool. And then you get a little bit of it 
you start getting a little bit more comfortable with it. And then you think that you're going to find some other new Bitcoin, the next Bitcoin, the Bitcoin that's good for the environment, all right? That farce or the Bitcoin that's uh, all of these things, right? The bigger, badder, better, faster Bitcoin. And then you end up getting in this trading hellhole uh, type of year or two period where you're on Kraken or some of these things and there's 3,000 assets staring you in the face and oh, this is Cosmos and it pays X percent a month and I can do this and I can stake it and I can blah, blah, blah. And then maybe you probably lose all your money uh, or a good portion of it. And then you realize that uh, you just want Bitcoin. And then you go through that period. So I try, I would love to eliminate that period for as many people as possible and just go uh, straight into Bitcoin and just wipe out the noise. That's, that's probably the most solid word that I've heard. It's probably the end game narrative on Bitcoin is it, right? <laughs> this, there's no competition. Like there's no debate going around. It's just bit, Bitcoin. Awesome. I love the clarity that you have with this investing that you're doing right now. Some of these other things may work. I mean, I, I don't know. And hey, it's always good to, to catch a pump, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there are a lot of technical analysts and people who make their living trading, and I have nothing against those people, okay? And uh, even people like Peter Brandt and, and uh, Tour de Meester and a lot of them who, uh, who've made their living trading, uh, they look for setups. You know, they look at 200 different chart patterns, okay? And if it looks like uh, Monero is breaking out, you know, taking a short-term trade on that versus equities versus bonds, gold, oil, whatever you're doing, there's nothing wrong with taking a trade and, and making some making some profits, right? And I they all stick that profit back into Bitcoin. Uh, they're not actually thinking, uh, well, this is going to be great because my robot's going to be paying your robot in this future world, and I want as much of this whatever currency as possible. Those are the type of things where people really get burned. You know, not just taking a quick trade because that's how you make your living. Right. Amazing. So uh, I want to talk about your investing thesis as well a little bit. So uh, when a company comes in uh, as a pitch, so how do you evaluate if you want to invest or not? Well, you close your eyes, you hold your nose and pray. And that's what you do. Um, I ask my cat, Cannoli, and he gives me uh, a meow or no meow. Um, well, I love that. A lot of a lot of a lot of VCs that I respect a lot have a ton of specific rules. Okay, maybe they won't invest in pre-revenue companies, uh, no matter what. I don't care what the company does if it's pre-revenue; they don't invest, right? Um, maybe they only invest in uh, two co-founders, uh, and one of them is technical, and one of them has a sales and marketing background, right? Or they have specific rules. Um, you know, I have one rule, which is I don't invest in uncapped notes, period, uh, whatever that company is, which in this environment, you're not even really seeing, uh, uncapped notes. Those are kind of gone. Uh, but for a minute they, they were, uh, they were back and hot and no matter what, right? So that's no, no uncapped notes, period. And, um, you know, it's nice to see something that is scalable, okay, and is a big market, right? Like, that's no secret. Everyone's looking for a big market. Um, you know, is it a niche product? Is it is it a is it a hobby project? Uh, that's not investable? Or is it a business? Um, there's plenty of things that are really cool that I love, but they're not investable businesses, right? There's this thing called RoboSats. It's a peer to peer uh, exchange over tour. It's fun. Um, but that's not an investable business. Uh, you know what I mean? They're, they're not like raising capital. It can't scale. Um, personally, I love, I love finance. I love payments. Uh, and I love that world. Uh, so we've been fortunate to invest in, in a bunch of those companies. Uh, we have not done any investing in mining, uh, which luckily has, is, is what is most sensitive to price fluctuations. So everything that we're investing in, and a big part of the thesis is whether the price is up or down uh, in a volatile market or not, um, it doesn't affect the core business, okay? Price goes up, price goes down, people are still going to spin that wheel, wheel on their fold card, right? 
Uh, people are still going to be buying those gift cards. People are still going to be um, buying Bitcoin or earning sats back through a browser extension for their shopping. Uh, and a lot of times they have accelerated use um, when we're in a depressed market, right? Because if you're earning uh, two to five to 10% uh, sats back on every one of your purchases and the price is down, uh, and you are on board with Bitcoin, you're trying to get every sat as possible, you know, while that price is down because it's denominated on a percentage basis. Um, so I, I look for those companies. I think that all the companies that we've invested in um, are not subject to um, trouble by a volatile market. Um, we're looking at some mining now because it's probably a good time to get into it. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I love to see post revenue companies. We've only invested in a few pre revenue companies and these were stellar teams with killer signaling. Uh, they had all sorts of acceptance to the visa fast track program or one thing or another, uh, that w made them kind of outstanding. Um, but post revenue, you know, 30 to 50% month over month growth, or at least solid, right? At least over 20% month over month growth, maybe with no marketing spend, just a grassroots sort of um, traction. Um, but, you know, and I'm sorry if I'm rambling here, but at the early stages, a lot of times you don't have a lot to look at. You know, you really only have maybe a, a, a scant Google Drive with uh, companies and corporation, uh, maybe there's a cap table that's got hardly anyone on it in there. Uh, maybe they're monitoring a few KPIs, but you don't really, you can't really do kind of complex due diligence uh, at the early stages in these companies. Um, so it really is about the founder. It's about the idea, the business, um, the traction. Um, and we have certain things that are, that are our style. Um, and, and, you know, you have that style. Uh, something you know, four guys who want to raise $10 million to put a bunch of ASIC miners in a barn. Uh, that is not for me. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't compute. Uh, some guy who's got a bunch of distressed natural gas in the middle of the Nevada desert. That's not for me. Okay, and God bless him. I'm sure he's a great father, husband, friend, whatever. And I hope he's successful with whatever he's doing. But those deals aren't for me. But like we have a deal right now, like it's a browser extension. I put it in the browser and now every ad that I'm looking at, I'm getting paid 50-50, the ad revenue in Bitcoin. Okay, that is my style. <laughs> uh, I love stuff like that. All right. Uh, you know, w ways to purchase, you know, the, the DCA apps, countries and geographies, you know, payments uh, where, you know, you issue a card once and you're going to share in that interchange on every swipe. Uh, moving forward, uh, that's done through an API, they can just be white labeled for other companies, those big scalable ideas. I love all that stuff. Um, so that's kind of the stuff that we look at. Yeah, sounds pretty awesome. And I, you're not at all rambling. And even if you are like, it's high value rambling, and I'm enjoying it totally. Uh, <laughs> because uh, it's, it's rare that I host someone who's so confident in what they're speaking, and they have utmost courage in speaking that and they don't doubt it even one bit like there, there are people who have bold opinions about things but then they would say that okay that's also fine but uh, this is my opinion right they, they are going to be like humble about it you're like okay this is it and there's no debate about it right and that's that's pretty cool i respect that uh besides and one more thing like uh whenever i think of a follow-up question that i'm that i'm going to ask you based on your answer you already answered that the next thing you say is right about that, right? So you are one step ahead of me in, in this interview. So that's awesome. So now, now I want to ask you about your, some, some exciting portfolio companies that you'd like to mention on the podcast. Oh my gosh, we got so many and I, I don't want to leave anyone out, but- um, Just two, two or three of you at the top of your mind. Ah, uh, two or three on the top of my mind. Oh my God, how can we even narrow it down? All right, um, boy, I'll, t I'll tell you, we had some firsts lately. Uh, we just had our first Bitcoin only uh, company that came out of the latest YC cohort. So in the summer 2022, uh, Bitstack is the name of that company. They're in Europe, uh, headquartered in France. 
And um, Bitstack is, you know, doing the same thing a lot of these companies are trying to do, right? Everyone's going to be the, the Bitcoin neobank. Um, but really cool company, uh, you know, these type of things to have a YC company. And it's probably the only Bitcoin only company I can think maybe ever that's come out of YC. They've done, they do a lot of crypto and other things, but that was a, that was a first for us. Um, you know, we have, we, we just did a deal for crowd health. Crowd health is super unique. They have a community healthcare uh, model where instead of paying for health insurance premium that you lose every month, you uh, pay into this plan. You get to keep the money. Okay. Uh, you can withdraw it at any time. And they have a partnership with Swan Bitcoin where you're saving in Bitcoin. Uh, and it's a community healthcare coverage thing for, you know, $179 a month. And you're not even spending it like a premium. You're not even losing it every month. But that's a good example of a company that's, they were a healthcare company, right? Crowd Health was just solely a healthcare company. Uh, the, the founder is an orange pill Bitcoiner. And he said, how can I also incorporate Bitcoin into this business, right? They didn't set out to be a Bitcoin business. They were a healthcare company, but they flipped the model to do a custodial deal with Swan Bitcoin for every account holder that wants to save in Bitcoin. And they have a whole marketing play after it. And like they've been super successful um, flipping into that. Um, Pleb Lab. Pleb Lab is in Austin, Texas. They're a Bitcoin focused accelerator um, and the extremely scrappy founder. Uh, and they are really the uh the ground zero for builders and programmers and people there in austin and there's a lot of news lately about other accelerators right nidig has the wolf in uh in um new york city and then tim draper has some sort of bitcoin studio he also has a lot of crypto other things but there's a bitcoin uh initiative by tim draper so there's a few of these accelerators um, the accelerator is nothing new, right? There's always been the plug in plays and the, the, the uh, 500 startups, but it's just solely in Bitcoin and like the cool, the cool Bitcoin, like the cool way that Pleb Lab is doing it. Um, that was a unique opportunity. Um, and we were actually the, the only investor at that time, uh, I think maybe still. Uh, and those are also my favorite deals or the ones that everyone else misses. Um, I mean, my gosh, you want me to keep going? Okay, I mean, foundation devices, right? They make this, this the sexiest Bitcoin hardware wallet you've el ever held in your hands. It's called, a, it's called a Passport, right? That's their version too. Okay, but they're doing real numbers, all right? We're talking seven plus figures a year in sales and they're developing a software business. Um, you know, there's a lot of high profile names uh, that are investing in them. And we were excited to, to have that in the syndicate. Um, yeah. I mean, Thunder Games, yeah. Thunder Games, talk about an example of companies that are unaffected by price. You download Thunder Games, one of these, you know, hit the ball kind of games or these like fun little uh, games for your phone. You earn sats, you're earning Bitcoin. Uh, I have a friend who earns $500 a day by, I'm sorry, 500 sats a day, which is a joke, right? She should get a job. I give her shit all the time. I'm like, what are you doing? Making 500 sats playing a, a bust the ball game. Um, but that's cool, right? And there's other parts of the world where maybe this sort of money is meaningful. Maybe earning a few dollars a month through your browser by changing nothing except getting monetized to pay for the ads, uh, something better than the Brave browser was doing, or maybe living in another country and earning a little bit from playing these games. If you're going to play a slot machine game anyway, you might as well earn some Bitcoin uh, by doing it. Um, you know, Scarce City, uh, they they auction off uh, rare Bitcoin uh, collectibles and uh, the NFTs that are all uh, done with Bitcoin, right? There's no Ethereum there and they're getting into selling miners. But when you go to like a big Bitcoin conference and they have the art set up, most of the time that's scarce city that does that, right? That's physical art, that's paintings, acrylic sculptures, whatever. So they're kind of like a Sotheby's of, you know, fine Bitcoin goods uh for auction and stuff uh and their entire business by the way is denominated uh in bitcoin uh there's no usd that ever comes in for a company like that um i mean there's just there's just so many companies i love them all i mean i could go through them all but i don't want to go forever here 
Yeah, that's great. And I, I love the ones that you mentioned. I'll make sure to uh, mention all those in the blog post. I'll go along with the episode. Uh, right now, I'll move on to the closing section, which is the rapid fire round. So I'll ask you five quick questions uh, about uh, Lightning Ventures, and you have to give five quick answers. Sounds good. You got it. All right. First one, uh, what geographical regions you invest in? We are not limited in any way on geography. Okay, we invested in Bitnob, uh, who is an African Bitcoin company uh, that we love. They're active in uh, many countries uh, on the continent of Africa. Uh, so, right, Bitstack, we just mentioned, they're in Europe, right? Same with satsback.com. Like, there's many European countries. Relay is a European country. Um, a lot of them are in the US. Um, so, there is no specific geography um that we're limited to uh that's kind of the magic about bitcoin right uh it's 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 it speaks universal language right, right. Uh, of money okay of money and innovation and every country has different laws okay some are more favorable for mining or less favorable some are better for starting up an exchange or other things so to answer your question uh everywhere Anywhere and everywhere. Pretty awesome, man. Uh, this one is a rapid fire, so we got to make it quick, right? So, uh oh, uh oh, yeah. okay. So, the next one is what's the preferred stage of investment? Um, pre series A, post revenue, accelerated growth that's measurable. Okay. And what's the typical check size? Through Lightning Ventures to date, all of our deals have fallen in between 100 to 500,000. Awesome. And where can founders pitch you? Um, our website, ltng.ventures, has a contact us. Uh, can always email me, uh, mike at ltng.ventures, or Twitter is just my name, Mike Jarmuz, J-A-R-M-U-Z. Um, any DM uh, contact on the website, um, ha happy to set something up. Awesome. I'll make sure to put all those in the show notes below. And last one is, uh, where can our listeners follow you? Well, I guess on your show right now. Um, we have a YouTube channel. Um, it's just for founder interviews. Okay, so when we're, we're recording one today, actually, with Slice, uh, adslice.com, if you're interested. Um, so when we invest in a company, we usually collect questions from our group, um, and we do a Q&A with the founder. So there is a YouTube channel that's probably linked on the website. Uh, I hope it's linked on our website, right? Lightning Ventures, or you can search it there. Um, and, you know, I would like to get more content around uh, investing and learning, right? Which I'm learning every day. Uh, I mean, we're all still learning. So I would like to do more, but right now we're just doing interviews with founders uh, that we've invested in. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. There's the audio only podcast or whatever on, uh, on anchor, but we're not content creation Kings, uh, or very good at that. Like you, like you are, uh, but we're, we're getting there. So ltng.ventures and uh, everything is pretty much there. Awesome. Yeah. We'll get there. No worries. And all these links will be in the show notes, including the YouTube and the audio podcast, everything. So thank you for coming on, uh, Mike. It was a pleasure talking to you. I love your confidence in what you're doing and the clarity of thought you have. And Bitcoin, Bitcoin All right. to the moon, yeah. Bitcoin to the moon, for sure. All right. Thank you so much. Not too quick, though. We, we want it to happen slowly. Why, why slowly. Why? So keep, keep, because we want, because, because we want to keep buying. We want, like, the, we could just sit around here at 20,000 for the next 18 months. I'd be happy. Okay. You know what I mean? Just go to Swan Bitcoin, sign up. Uh, I think if you use uh, the code, I think if you use a Lightning Ventures code, you get something for free. I'm not sure. Uh, but go, just turn on $100 a week, $25 mm -hmm. a week, $25 mm -hmm. a day. You know, just turn it on and forget about right. it. And when you log into that account, when we're back at $80,000 for a Bitcoin, it's going to be very meaningful. So I don't want to see Bitcoin at 200 k tomorrow. I'd rather just be, just let's hang out here for a little while let the founders keep building and then we'll get there when we get there pretty awesome uh do share the code uh with me i'll put it in the show notes as well so that our listeners who are interested can go there and sign up and i'll do that probably too right <laughs> thank you so thank you for coming on mike pleasure hosting you and happy investing yeah thanks for having pleasure. me